All right, folks, a little tutorial about Travis picking and these hammer-on banjo rolls that I like to do. Um, you know, Travis picking is something that um, I wanted to do early on uh, when I got, well, probably by the time I got to college, but most of the guys that I knew that knew how to do the Merle Travis thing and the Chet Atkins thing, all that kind of stuff, they always had music in the family. You know, they always had like an Uncle Bob that showed them how to do that stuff. I had one uncle, his name was John, he worked in a bank, didn't show me a damn thing, okay? So when I got to college, I remember this buddy of mine, Rob, uh, he, they, they had a musical family, they'd have like a musical uh, family reunion where everyone would play and they played all kinds of different stuff and he knew how to play Merle Travis stuff. And, uh, and I would say, play that Merle Travis stuff. And he'd go to his guitar case, open it up, and he'd have little sucrets. If you remember those little lozenges back in the day from when you had a sore throat, you'd get sucrets. A cool little metal container, like an Altoid container. And he'd open it up, and there would be the secret picks of doom. And he would get out of his thumb pick, and he'd start doing this, you know. That kind of stuff. I was like, oh my God, how is that even possible? Um, it was an absolute mystery to me. And I remember I borrowed one of his records. It was a Merle Travis, Joe Maphis duo record. It was disheartening to say the very least. Uh, so it wasn't until quite some time later, I gradually got into a like beginner's Travis picking by just kind of figuring <laughs> that kind of a thing. Uh, because you know, early on I thought Travis picking was a which is Travis picking, but when Merle does it, or with Chet does it, it's more like a stride piano type of thing. All that kind of stuff. I was like, ah, I gotta learn how to do that. So, do, do that, I should say. Did I say do that? Huh. Losing my mind. Anyway, so um, basically I, I learned how to do that kind of mystery train riff. And then I realized, well, you don't have to be going, you know, E string, D string, A string, e, D string, you know, actually just going E string, D string is enough to keep things going. But it's the idea of keeping that, that pick going. And it was really hard for me to do this because the thumb pick stuff, when you're using your thumb pick, you have your index finger free which is infinitely more coordinated than your middle or your third or your pinky. Uh, as soon as you're holding a pick, uh, you're taking your index finger out of action and you're going to have to try to do all that other stuff with these other fingers. But for me, when I finally did the deep dive and thought I really didn't know how to Travis pick, I thought I don't have a Sucrets container. I don't want to have a secret stash of special thumb picks that I'm going to use when I do this stuff. I just want to use my flat pick that I use for everything else to do this style of Travis picking. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, so I'm going to show you two things real quick. I'm going to show you this. That's one version of Travis picking that I learned. And again, it's the idea of... So I'm using palm muting to get that thing going. So palm muting on the lower strings. And again, when doing this, when you're playing a thumb pick, you've got gravity working in your favor. So it's easy to chunk out those, those low notes and they sound full. And then when you use your fingers in the upper string and pluck them, it's, it's balanced. But you got more girth in the low end because you got that thumb pick. When you're using the pick, it's not as forceful sounding as your plucked fingers. So you have to make a conscious effort to balance them out. <laughs> That's another version of that. I add a little. With extra syncopation there. And again, for, to get that muting, I'm actually using my left hand. To lessening up on the pressure with my left hand to make those mutes happen. Okay. 
Now there's a two bar Travis picking pattern that I show people like when I'm going. And it's basically this, the first, I'm just using this A7 up here, and I'm putting the ninth on the top, and I'm ignoring the A string altogether, okay? And the pattern goes like this. That's a pattern I use for all my traveling. All right, folks, so what I would say is when you're practicing this type of thing, the tendency is to use, uh, to really pop your fingers, and the, the volume of those high strings is gonna be as such where you feel like maybe the, the pick isn't as loud. Uh, but my suggestion is instead of like picking way harder to try to match the, the, uh, uh, the popping of the strings with the fingers is just kind of not pop so hard with the, with the fingers and then match it up that way. Cause you want the less force, the better. It'll sound better. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you were these, um, what I call uh, hammer on banjo rolls. Uh, and I use it in this tune that I'm about to show you, but I, I just to generally speak, if I take this, that's what I'm talking about. So what I'm doing is I, that first one's just a straight banjo, roll. but when I get here, I go. So what I'm doing there is I'm, I'm picking the E string, hammering on, and then picking it again with a banjo roll. Banjo roll being E string, D string, G string. So I'm hammering on, picking it again. So I pick it, hammer on, pick it again. <laughs> I do that for a lot of different stuff. Like if I'm doing like a, a harmonized two five in E, like. That really works out well. Oh, sorry. Okay. And I'll do that for chords as well. idea of these um, hammer-on banjo rolls and I, as I said I do them quite a bit in a number of different circumstances there you have it hammer-on banjo rolls and Travis Pickin what a buffet of goodness take and eat <laughs>